What's up YouTube, Vic here. What I wanna to talk to you guys today a little bit about is how to design your own exercise program. First things first, we wanna find a good balance when we're designing an exercise program. Certain amounts of excessive volume or excessive intensity can actually be a little bit too much for most of us. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna find a good balance and, and we're specifically talking about resistance training. We're gonna find a good balance on how to get an entire workout in one day an entire workout in on the second day, maybe take a day off, work out on days four and five, take a day off, maybe take both days off over the course of the weekend. It's gonna be very straightforward, very simple, okay? In my opinion, the best way to break up your splits, now your split is a two-day split would mean that you've worked your entire body out over the course of two days. A four-day split means you got your entire body trained over the course of four days, so on and so forth. So to me, there are two main distinctions, maybe three, that are very simple, very easy to follow in terms of splits that I would recommend any and everybody start with. And even people who are advanced weightlifters can still implement these and have tremendous results. So I like to go with either an upper lower split, meaning one day you train upper body, the next day you train lower body, or a push pull split, meaning one day you train your entire body, focusing on all of those pulling movements, and then on the next day, you focus on all of those pushing movements, okay? There's a rule called progressive overload, or continuous overload, it depends on who you're talking to as to how they refer to it, but the whole idea behind progressive overload is that you're steadily and constantly increasing the amount of stress you're putting on your body. Now, you can do that in a number of ways, but the basic ones that we're gonna focus on, are we're gonna focus on repetitions, we're gonna focus on sets, and we're gonna focus on rest periods. Just those three. I think it's more beneficial to train your body, so your upper body, your lower body, your body as a whole, a little more frequently with just slightly less intensity versus going balls to the wall every single time you train and doing tons and tons of sets for just one specific part of your body. I think that there are certain individuals who will benefit from that, but I think that the vast majority of us um, are going to benefit from a little bit less of that. And like I said, focusing more on a little more frequency as opposed to more intensity. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is, let's look at the split. This is gonna be an example of a way that you can manipulate three weeks of training and you can do it over and over and over again. So you can go through week one, week two, week three, and then you can make a small adjustment and go back to week one and work through it again. Small adjustment, work through it again. So it's one of these things that is something that you will be able to use over and over and over again once you have a very basic understanding of just a few things. So let's say week one, we're gonna do an upper lower split. Day one, it's gonna be all upper body. Day two is gonna be all lower body. Day three is gonna be a rest day. Day four, all upper body. Day five, all lower body. And then you're resting on Saturday and Sunday, okay? For each of these workouts, there's only a couple things that you need to focus on. One is I want you to pick one compound movement. Compound movement is a movement that involves multiple joints. So for instance, for our upper body day, that could be something like bench press, where we're moving at the shoulder joint and the elbow joint. It could be a row, where we're moving at the elbow joint and the shoulder joint. Next, I want you to pick two supersets of auxiliary movements. Now, auxiliary movements are movements that simply assist with our ability to perform those compound movements. For an upper body, let's say our compound movement is bench press. A couple of auxiliary movements that will help with bench press would be something like a chest fly or a tricep extension, something that works those muscles that are responsible for performing that compound movement, but at a slightly lower intensity. And just as they're labeled, as auxiliary movements to assist with that compound movement, okay? So we've got one compound movement, two supersets of auxiliary movements, meaning we're gonna pick one and two and go back and forth between those two. And then we're gonna go to two more exercises and do them in the same manner. Same thing for the entire week. That's how I want you to program each of those workouts for that week, whether it's upper or lower. During week one, you're gonna also determine your starting rest periods. So I would say start a little bit higher maybe 90 seconds between each set. After we get through these first three weeks, when we come back to week one, we're gonna slightly adjust those to make the workout a little bit more challenging. The other factor that you're gonna be able to adjust once you get back to week one after the three week 
phase is we're gonna be able to manipulate our sets. So on the first week, what I want you to do is three sets of everything. Once we get through and get back to that week one, then maybe we bump it up to four sets. We go through all three weeks, bump it up to five sets. Going into week two, this is how we're gonna make a small adjustment to keep our body guessing. Instead of doing an upper lower split, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a push pull. So now every time we work out, we're working our entire body. However, we're gonna be focusing solely on the pushing movements or the pulling movements, okay? Day one is gonna be pushes. Everything pushing. Chest exercises, shoulder exercises, quad exercises, so on and so forth. Day two, pulling. It's just the reverse of that. Everything pulling. We're gonna be working our hamstrings, a lot of glute work, we're gonna be getting our back, our biceps, okay? So rows, bicep curls, hamstring curls, RDLs, deadlifts things that are pulling in nature. Just remember now, you're focusing on your entire body, regardless of whether it's a push day or a pull day, it's still total body. Moving into week three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it up just one more time. So instead of doing a lower upper split or doing a push pull split, we're actually gonna do a little combination of both. We're gonna do an upper pull day, then a lower pull day, take a day off. Upper push day, lower push day, take Friday and Saturday off. Guys, it's very simple. Same method that we've been implementing in the first two weeks. We're talking one compound movement, and then we're talking two pairs of auxiliary movements set up in a superset fashion. Guys, everything is gonna be three rounds to start on these first three weeks. Everything is gonna be about 90 seconds of rest in between sets. In your rep range, it's up to you. Okay, so we've gone through all three weeks now. We're gonna come back to week one and we're gonna keep the same template that we had for week one originally, but now we're gonna do a couple of things. We're either going to decrease our rest periods, meaning we're gonna work a little bit faster instead of 90 seconds, maybe we're taking 60 seconds between our sets. We can change our repetitions. So if you were doing eight to 10 at a heavier weight, you can go ahead and you can lighten the weight a little bit or use a similar weight and try to bump up the repetitions a little bit, okay? increasing that time under tension, again, just confusing the body. The third and final thing that I would say you should focus on manipulating is gonna be number of sets, okay? So if we were doing three sets at everything for those first three weeks, bump it up to four. Guys, you don't have to change all of those variables. You can change one, you can change two, you can change all three. But as long as you're changing those variables in some combination, it's gonna keep your body guessing, guys. In addition to that, you don't have to, but you can change up your exercise selection. So you can stick with the same exercises. You can simply change the order in which you're doing them. You can keep a few of the exercises and add a few new ones. So maybe you keep your compound movement the same, but you change up a couple of those accessory movements, or you can change them all. It really doesn't matter but it's that simple, guys. Those are the only things that you really need to concern yourself with is consistency and then small adjustments, small variable change that keeps your body from getting 100% used to what you're doing. Guys, with all of the free resources out there on the internet, you can learn just about anything. Just lay it out and show yourself that you have the ability to design a workout program for yourself. That in and of itself is gonna be a tremendous mental tool for you to have in your pocket. And I promise you, it'll change the way that you actually train. If you want more detail on anything that we just went over, please feel free to leave a comment in the, in the comments section below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Until next time, go ahead, design that workout guys, and we'll talk to you soon.